Hello students, welcome to EPG Parsala. I am Dr. Hari Mohan from Center for Medical Biotechnology, Mahashri Dayan University, Rotak, Haryana. Today we are going to discuss about a module, Genetic Engineering and Applications under paper, Animal Cell Biotechnology. The main objectives of this module are to understand what is genetic engineering, what are typical steps to be followed during this genetic engineering process, what are the applications of genetic engineering in the field of medicine, diagnostics and animal health care and what are its future prospective and scenario. Genetic engineering is a word which has been derived from two words that is genome and engineering. So in the layman language we can say it is engineering of gene. More precisely we can say genetic engineering is a process of modifying the level of expression of a protein in a natural unnatural host and or uh, making a clone of a specific gene segment in a another species of bacteria or insect cells. This field of genetic engineering is very exciting and it seems to be very promising but it all started with the discovery of restriction enzymes with the discovery of ligases and the concept that we can put a foreign gene in a plasmid so this concept that we can combine two type of dna and make, can make a hybrid dna gave rise to the concept of genetic engineering but today with the uh, data of complete human genome sequence in our hand we can think anything earlier the non-coding dna was known as junk dna but today people are trying to express genes from junk dna and they found that yes this junk dna contains useful information people are coming coming up with the idea that this junk dna may be expressed in the uh, expression vectors and these proteins may serve as anti anti uh, antibiotic or antimicrobial use or some of the proteins can have anti insect or more specifically they can be used as insecticide or pesticides so this seems to be very interesting that earlier what we think that is a junk is a useful thing and it all happened only due to genetic engineering techniques the word genetic engineering has been derived from genome and engineering so what is genome genome is complete set of genes of an organism genome encodes all the information of an organism for example human have 23 pair of chromosomes which makes a complete genome of human each chromosome is made up of DNA and a segment of chromosome which encode a particular protein or RNA is a gene. So we are considered about gene, how to change a gene which is occurring naturally there. If we want to change a segment of gene or complete gene, it will result into change in the product of that gene, that is protein and that will result in change in the phenotype or change in the genotype of the organism using this characteristic of dna we can change the four letter language in which all the information is stored in dna for interest of human being expression vessels it means the organism in which we can express protein of our interest for example e coli is very commonly used for expressing human proteins human insulin was first expressed in e coli so it is like a vessel which is used for expression for the expression of any other desired gene into the expression vessel it require promoter it require operator proper reading frame and a terminator sequence also if we are using prokaryotic organism for expression and the gene is from eukaryotic origin so the introns need to be removed from exons so that only coding region is present because in prokaryotes the splicing don't occur 
so if we are expressing a human gene in e coli we need to give the cdna of particular gene only it must not contain introns otherwise functional protein will not be formed so these events have made a impact in the history of genetic engineering we can say genetic engineering started with the dna cloning technique developed by boyer cohen and berg in 1972 to 73 but before that it was mazur in 1869 who isolated dna from white blood cells every provide the evidence that yes it is dna which is genetic material not the proteins barson and crick proposed double helix model on the work done by franklin and wilkins in 1953 and in 1955 kornberg discovered dna polymerase 61 it was murmer and doty who discovered dna renaturation so all these discoveries helped boyer cohen and berg to perform the famous dna cloning experiment it was in 1975 southern discovered the bloating technique for detection of dna sequence in 1975 to 77 sanger proposed dna dye deoxy chain termination method and maxim and gilbert proposed chemical degradation method of dna sequencing in 1981 to 82 palmer and brinster produced transgenic mice and sparling and rubin produced transgenic fruit fly in 1982 gene bank nih public genetic database was established at nih it was in 1985 when the kerry mullis performed the very famous experiment of polymerase chain reaction so mullis is credited with the discovery of polymerase chain reaction and it was in 18 1989 field and song developed the yeast to hybrid system so these important discoveries they paved the way of genetic engineering and paved the way how we can produce the recombinant protein very easily it was in 1995 venter and colleague sequenced the first complete genome and that was of bacterium haemophilus influenzae till date we have facility of sequencing complete human genome at a cheaper price earlier it was in millions of dollars but today the complete human genome can be sequenced in 1000 dollar so this human genome project has opened up the era of information we have every kind of information about human genome and that can be used in a positive way by mean of genetic engineering tools so exactly what we do in genetic engineering the dna from the target organism is isolated for example in case of plant or bacteria c tap method can be used for dna extraction for animal phenol chloroform method can be used for dna extraction after that a target sequence or a part of gene or complete gene is targeted by pcr amplification and a segment is amplified then using different restriction enzymes it is cut at a particular site so both vector as well as target gene must be cut by the same enzyme so that they can combine with the sticky ends or blunt ends so cutting of dna like a scissor gave the idea of restriction enzyme basically we can say there are three type of restriction enzyme or more specifically restriction endonucleases that is type 1 type 2 and type 3 the type 1 and type 3 they cut far from the site of recognition but the type 2 restriction endonucleases cut at the same site where they recognize that's why it is type 2 restriction enzyme which is used in genetic engineering the enzyme can cut and can form a 5 prime overhang or 3 prime overhang means sticky ends or it is possible that the enzymes may cut and form a blunt end so depending on the end produced the ligation can be done with the help of t4 dna ligase blunt to blunt ligation or sticky to sticky ligation can can be done during this genetic engineering experiments 
this PCR product during this normal PCR by tech DNA polymerase it produce a, a 3 prime A so when the the cloning vector with the T is used it will uh, produce T type of cloning so that is also interesting way of cloning how we can clone directly the PCR product by mean of TA cloning vector but ligation with a highly efficient ligases such as T4 DNA ligase is very important to make the hybrid DNA stable so that it can be transformed into the suitable host so there are different steps in a typical genetic engineering experiment and these steps are isolation of DNA and plasmid second cutting of DNA and plasmid, third ligation and insertion, fourth transformation in a suitable host and fifth expression of recombinant protein. So first step that is isolation. Isolation of specific gene or target gene from donor involves extraction of total DNA. It can be human DNA, it can be animal DNA or plant DNA. So the total DNA is used for setting up PCR reaction and a targeted gene is amplified. So that amplification of gene result in millions of copy of that particular segment and that is then subjected to restriction enzyme digestion. From the bacteria also the plasmid in which cloning is to be done. The plasmid is extracted by various methods and the plasmid is purified and quantified the dna as well as vector which have been extracted is subjected to digestion with the restriction enzymes these restriction enzymes act as molecular scissor so they cut dna at specific sites and they produce restriction sites so these restriction sites can be sticky type or blunt type in sticky also it can be 5 prime overhang or 3 prime overhang so when the dna is subjected to cutting the restriction enzyme will recognize a specific sequence also known as palindromic sequence and will cut in a particular fashion either it will produce 3 prime overhang either it will produce 5 prime overhang or produce a blunt ended dna and that serves the purpose if it is 5 prime overhang so both 5 prime overhang can have complementary binding so after cutting these sticky ends of vector and sticky end of target gene they will make complementary binding by mean of AT and GC pairing so this AT and GC pairing support the complementary binding of target gene with the target vector so after complementary binding it is necessary that their end should be ligated and this process of ligation is completed with the help of dna ligase dna ligase is an enzyme which anneal the cut end of dna but here in the genetic engineering experiment specifically highly efficient dna ligase are used so mostly it is t4 dna ligase which is extracted from t4 bacteriophage and it have high activity and result in rapid ligation of the dna ends so this dna ligase resulted in joining of the digested dna ends and it form a complete dna molecule which contains vector dna and the target gene so after the DNA ligated the vector DNA with the target DNA, it is ready to be inserted in the host. So this hybrid plasmid which contains gene of interest can be inserted either in bacteria or in yeast or in insect cells or mammalian cell lines depending on the requirement what is the requirement for protein expression and what kind of promoter operator and terminator site the plasmid have transformation can be defined as a process of uptake of dna from the environment so when a bacterial cell uptake 
DNA from the environment and integrate that DNA in its own genome. So that process is known as transformation. But in case of genetic engineering, transformation is done by making pores in the cell wall of bacteria. So the pores can be made by various methods. Making pore can be also called as making the cells competent. So the cells, the way bacterial cells can be made competent by calcium chloride method or calcium chloride, rubidium chloride method or by using some other uh, commercial kits. These bacterial cells can be made competent means their pore size increases and through these pores the recombinant DNA which contains gene of in insert can be inserted into the host. So it is also possible that if the efficiency is less we can give heat soak. When we give the heat soak at 42 degrees Celsius the size of pore of this competent cell will increase and with the increase in size of pores the recombinant DNA can enter inside the host cell easily. So this process of transformation impart unique property to the bacterial cell. So the bacteria which will receive the recombinant DNA will get some additional properties like antibiotic resistance. So it will get a marker. So that bacteria will be resistant to specific antibiotic for which there is a gene is there. For example, ampicillin resistance or canamycin resistance will be there. By this marker, we can differentiate the transformed cells from non-transformed cells. So that is very important because if we cannot separate transformed cells from non-transformed cells, it will be very difficult for the scientists to screen all the cells. So by just selecting the transformed cell, it is quite easy to search for the protein of interest, to search for the gene of interest in the transformed clone. So when we are looking for expression, many things need to be taken in consideration. What is the size of target protein? What is the nature of target protein? Whether the target protein is modified or not? So all things need to be taken in consideration. What is the stability of the target recombinant protein? Whether the target recombinant protein form inclusion bodies inside the cell? So whether the target protein is secretory in nature or it will be stored as inclusion body inside the bacterial cell. So all these factors will determine what kind of expression vector we will take and what kind of host we will select for expression. So by taking care all these factors, a suitable expression vector and suitable host is taken. In case where we want to first clone in prokaryote and then express in eukaryote, we can use subtle vector that can be that can have two kind of promoters or that can have that can multiply in prokaryote as well as eukaryote or that can have two kind of oricytes so that it can multiply in different type of species. So subtle vector is also an important vector when we talk about expression. The expression level can be judged by western bloating. We can see whether the target protein, whether the target recombinant protein is there in the sample or not by just doing western bloating using the specific antibodies to that recombinant protein. So all these steps can be summarized in this figure as DNA and plasmid is extracted from their respective source and then they are subjected to digestion with the same restriction enzyme. So digestion with same restriction enzyme will produce sticky ends and these sticky ends are complementary. They will make complementary base pairing with the help of DNA ligase. They can be ligated and then they can be transformed into the required host. Most commonly it is E. coli because E. coli is very easy to handle and it's very easy to insert the recombinant plasmid in the E. coli. After the recombinant plasmid is inside the host and it have all the elements required for expression of any protein means operator, promoter and termination site 
the expression will start the gene will be transcribed and later on translated it is also important to note here that if the gene is of eukaryotic origin and it is to be expressed in prokaryotes it must not be post translated modified because you uh, prokaryotes lack most of the post translational modification for example the protein must not be glycosylated because there is no post translation glycosylation process in prokaryotes although nowadays we have strains of e coli which can specifically produce glycosylation or any other post translational modification so we have specialized strain of e coli for this purpose so dna fragments of different size can be cloned in the same vector and after transformation they will form different colonies so th these different colonies can be picked and can be processed accordingly so we can clone dna fragment of any size and for every size we require specific vector with the increasing size of dna fragment we require vectors which can accommodate larger segments such as back vector yak vector etc so why there is need of genetic engineering genetic engineering have many applications it have n number of applications in medical field in plant field and in microbial biotechnology so in medical field the most important is therapeutic use that is also known as gene therapy so to insert the defective gene and replace the gene which is causing disease is the target of gene therapy second is to produce genetically modified organism to cure genetic disease by replacing the defective genes to produce essential protein in different organism to produce combinations of gene from different organism that are impossible to occur naturally and vaccine production and diagnostics production are also main objectives or main applications of genetic engineering in medical field so today we will discuss these applications in detail the recombinant protein can be used for therapeutic purpose so therapeutic cloning also serves as an important arm of genetic engineering to produce biopharmaceuticals which can be used for treating various disease and to produce or to change the defective gene inside the body so this therapeutic use of recombinant proteins are immense almost all protein factors have been expressed in the in the form of recombinant proteins and many other hormones and enzymes have been expressed and these recombinant proteins have the same efficiency as that of natural proteins the defective gene in the patient can be replaced with the uh, normal gene the first successful treatment was done in a sri lankan uh, female that was asanthi de silva for the disease scid so the defective gene was replaced in the leukocytes and these leukocytes will were placed back in the body and they were functioning normally so this was the first successful case of gene therapy and from this case it all started a cascade that how we can treat different genetic abnormalities this slide shows a list of proteins more specifically recombinant proteins so these recombinant protein they are used in specific disease conditions for example lepirudin is a anticoagulant and that is used for treatment of disseminated intravascular coagulopathy associated with heparin sarupalase is a thrombolytic drug which is used for acute myocardial infarction latiplase is also thrombolytic that is used for acute thrombo uh, myocardial infarction interleukin 2 is used for treatment of renal carcinoma interleukin 11 for treatment of 
thrombocytopenia, interferon beta 1b is used for therapeutics of multiple sclerosis, interferon gamma for treatment of chronic granulomatous disease. This blood clotting factor, factor 8 is used for treatment of hemophilia A, factor 9 for hemophilia B. So you can see how easy it has become to obtain this factor. Earlier, these factor were extracted from killing the animals and they were very expensive. With the help of genetic engineering, these recombinant proteins, they are, are getting cheaper and they are available for normal human being also. Factor 7 is used for treatment of both hemophilia A and B. Dorsa alpha is used for treatment of cystic fibrosis. These proteins are also recombinant in nature and they are used depending on the purpose. For example, arthropoietin alpha is a hematopoietic factor and used for anemia associated with renal failure and HIV infection. Arthropoietin beta is also used for anemia associated with renal failure. Insulin lispro that is also a recombinant protein and very commonly used is used for treatment of diabetes. HCG that is human chorionic gonadotropin is used for super ovulation in case of assisted reproductive techniques. FSH is used for treatment of infertility and recombinant LH is used for induction of ovulation. Here we can say that these recombinant protein they are handy and they are getting cheaper and they are easily available. We don't need to sacrifice animals for extracting these proteins. So we can say genetic engineering have changed the way how we use to treat disease conditions. As we know that there are many inherited or chromosomal abbreviated diseases which have no cure. But with the advent of genetic engineering, there is a hope that the defective gene or the defective chromosome can be repaired. So there are chances that with the help of gene therapy, the defective gene can be replaced by normal gene through homologous recombination. But that is also a thing of future because till date very few successful cases of gene therapy have been observed. So there is debate whether gene therapy is a success or it is a failure. In cases of restenosis that is reblockage of coronary artery after they have been opened by bypass surgery or angioplasty there is again and again blockage occurred so this blockage occurred due to deficiency of vascular endothelial growth factor so what was done 13 patients were injected in heart with a dna encoding for this factor vascular endothelial growth factor and this factor promoted angiogenesis all the 13 patients had improved heart function so we can say in this case gene therapy was a success but on the other hand inability to produce or ornithine transcarbamylase caused a disease and efforts were done to replace this defective gene with a normal gene so jesse Gelsinger was a young volunteer in the gene therapy trial who had a moderate OTC deficiency. But the volunteer died on 17 September 1999. The probable reason of death may be high concentration of adenovirus that expressed OTC. It may be possible that the massive immune response against the virus might have killed the volunteer. So in this case, gene therapy appears a failure. But by single example, we cannot say this is success or it's a failure. It needs to be standardized further. It needs to be refined. And then only we can say whether it is useful or not. Genetic engineering is also used for producing genetically modified organisms, popularly known as GMOs. GMOs are the recombinant protein expressing bacteria 
most commonly it is e coli which produce a number of biopharmaceuticals although other microbes can also be used for inserting certain gene of interest gmo can be used very successfully for bioremediation recently china has used these gmos for cleaning of oil spills in the sea and it was a successful operation so every country is making guidelines policies for regulations regarding gmo but our country is still awaiting for strict regulations regarding gmos another advantage of genetic engineering is to produce essential protein in different organism so these proteins which are required for different functions they can be expressed in the suitable host for example human insulin coagulation factors hormones etc they can be expressed in suitable host either e coli yeast insect cells or mammalian cells depending on the requirement and amount of recombinant protein re uh, required for the test so in medical sciences recombinant protein can be used for developing diagnostic kits so antigenic and highly immunogenic protein of virus or bacteria or protozoa or fungus can be selected and it can be expressed in e coli or yeast so that high amount of antigenic protein can be used for raising specific antibodies in rabbits or it can be used directly as antigen for standardizing ELISA or radio immunoassay or any other immunoassay such as western blotting so this recombinant dna technology has opened up novel ways for standardizing diagnostic kits for developing diagnostic kits and it had made the field of diagnosis easy recombinant protein can be used for vaccine production if we can identify a specific epitope which is highly immunogenic that can be expressed in higher amount and the very successful example of recombinant vaccine is hepatitis b vaccine where the hepatitis surface antigen has been expressed in yeast and it is used as a vaccine so for other pathogens also the epitope which is highly immunogenic can be identified and that can be used as a vaccine to conclude or to summarize the module we can say the most important application of genetic engineering will be deciphering the location function and interaction of genes present in wide variety of living organism elucidation of the function of junk dna earlier junk dna was considered to be useless but nowadays it has been proposed that this junk dna also have important function to elucidate what is its function and how it can be used will pay way for treatment of many genetic disease and it will answer many questions which were earlier unanswerable now human being is close to making artificial genome and artificial cell so once artificial genome and artificial cell is formed human being will be able to form artificial life so genetic engineering is getting more and more important as we are moving in the direction of artificial life so potential of commercialization of recombinant proteins have converted biotechnology industry into a more than 45 billion dollar venture and the amount is increasing day by day when the newer and newer recombinant proteins are coming in the market so we can say the genetic engineering has changed the way how disease was treated the recombinant proteins have changed the way how vaccines were formed how diagnostics were developed and it have changed totally the way of medicine it may be possible that after 10 years or 20 years we may forget antibiotic and we may start using something else for treating infectious as well as 
lifestyle disease so this is this will be the impact of genetic engineering thank you very much